what is up youtube it's your boy alter ego and today we are going to be doing a complete guide to imperium if you don't know what imperium is it's pretty much an all-in-one admin creative and debugging mod created by joe swell a lot of you guys ask how i find the information presented in my videos about half of it comes from data mining and the other half comes from in-game testing with imperium i've separated everything into chapters in case you want to skip to or refer to a specific section of the mod so without further ado let's get started first off you should know that you can use Use this mod in multiplayer whether that's a private lobby with friends or in a public lobby but the host needs to have imperium if the host doesn't have imperium then you will not be able to use it if you are using imperium with friends it's recommended that every player has imperium i quickly want to go over the hotkeys on the left side we have a list of the universal hotkeys and on the right we have a list of the free cam hotkeys i'll be going over all of these hotkeys throughout this video i just wanted to create a page for you guys to screenshot or refer back to while using imperium the first hotkey and the the most important hotkey is F1, which is used to toggle the Imperium UI. On top, you'll see a list of Imperium's 11 different windows. You can move these windows anywhere you'd like, and you can even shrink or expand these windows by holding the Alt key and dragging in or out with your cursor. We're going to dive into each of these windows, but first I want to cover what will likely be your most used hotkey, which is F2. F2 toggles the console. Here, you can spawn valuables, items, upgrades, and enemies. If I want to spawn a headman, for example, I'll just type headman and hit enter. As a side note, just because of the way spawning works, enemies will not spawn right in front of you, but they will spawn close by. You can also put the amount you want spawned, so if I want 5 wizard cubes, I'll type cube 5, and 5 cubes will spawn. Most things you can do in the Imperium UI can be done here. You can open windows, enable or disable specific settings, set specific settings. For example, if I want move speed to be at 50, I can type set speed 50. You can load into specific maps and you can even teleport to specific coordinates. You can even find settings in the Imperium UI using the console. For example, let's say I want to find God mode. If I type God mode, I can enable or disable it here or I can click the cogwheel icon, which will show me exactly where God mode is located. This works for any command with the cogwheel icon. If you'd like a more in-depth guide on the console or Imperium in general, you can find that on the Imperium wiki, which I'll link in the description. I also quickly want to cover the minimap just because I think it's one of the coolest features in the mod. By pressing M, you'll toggle Imperium's minimap. At the top, you'll have the name of the map you're on and a compass, and at the bottom, you have your coordinates, level, rotation degree, and extraction points. You can zoom in and out by holding Alt and scrolling with your mouse wheel. By default, you'll have a top-down view, but you can change this by pressing F8 to pull up the full-screen minimap. Here, you can left-click to rotate the camera, or you can right-click to move the camera. You can toggle the minimap and the compass. You can also turn on and off rotation lock. By default, rotation lock is on, which means the minimap will always face the direction you're facing, but if you turn rotation lock off, the camera will just stay in one direction. You have auto clipping, which I usually just keep on, but if you turn it off, it'll give you some extra settings that basically tell the minimap what to show and what to ignore. The only reason you'd really do this is to remove the ceiling from showing on the minimap, which you can do by pulling this number up to around 30. You can change the target to you, your teammates, and even enemies. On the right, you have a list of layers that you can click on or off. For example, if I don't want to see enemies on the minimap, I can turn enemies off. I won't be going over these layers, but feel free to play with these on your own. Imperium also has a measuring tool which can be accessed by pressing O. With this tool, you can measure the distance between any two points in units. If you'd like a more exact measurement, you can hold Alt to enable axis snapping, which will make it easier to draw straight lines. Now that we have those out of the way, let's get to the meat and potatoes of Imperium, which is all located in the Imperium UI. The first window is the control panel. Here we have grabber settings, physics settings, and player settings. You'll usually be using the player settings on the right as you can toggle infinite energy, god mode, and a handful of other useful things. Invisibility will make you completely invisible to enemies. Muted will mute your footsteps so enemies will not be able to hear you. You can adjust night vision, field of view, movement speed, and jump force. And if you want to reset any of these variables to their default setting, you can easily do so by pressing the reset button. Also, as a little tip, if you don't know what something does, you can hover over it to read about it. On the left side, we have grabber settings and physics settings. Sticky grabber will basically force you to always be grabbing. So if I were to pass by an item with my cursor, it'll grab and hold that item until I turn sticky grabber off. Now, these grabber settings and physics settings are all coded into the game, but not actually used. First off, we have grab strength, which correlates to how much strength you have when holding an item. 
This is not the same as a strength upgrade. If you're looking for strength upgrades, that can be found under the upgrades tab located here. As of now, you'll need to reload the level when you adjust your upgrades for them to work, or you can just spawn these upgrades in in the console. Next, we have throw strength, and if I turn it all the way up, I can now throw items really hard. We have base range, which is just responsible for how far I can pick up items, and we have min and max distance, which are used to adjust how close and far I can scroll the item while holding it. Under physics settings, you have spring and damping constant, which affect the item you're holding. Bringing spring constant all the way up will make the item super wobbly, and damping constant is basically resistance, so if I were to turn quickly, you can see the item takes a lot longer to come around. Next, we have the object explorer. Here, you'll have a list of all players, extraction points, enemies, items, and valuables. The player that's in bold is the host, and any players with the I symbol next to their names means they also have Imperium. The first arrow will teleport you to that entity, so if I want to teleport to the spewer, I can click this arrow and I'll teleport right to it. The second arrow will teleport that entity to you, so if I want to bring this face to me, I hit this arrow and now I can place this item wherever I want. Next are these check marks which will turn enemy AI on or off. So if I turn off this robe's AI, it will freeze in place and no longer get any AI updates, meaning it won't move or die until I turn its AI back on. The Z box spawns and despawns the enemy. This is mostly used when you're testing an enemy and they despawn, you can click this box to spawn them back in. You can remove enemies by pressing the X, and you can kill players by pressing the skull. If a player is dead, you'll have a revive option instead of the skull. Finally, you can complete extraction points by pressing the check mark next to them. Next up, we have my favorite panel, which is the visualizations panel. Here, you can find visuals for noise indicators, player proximity, level points, and the nav mesh surface. Noise indicators will show bubbles for every sound in the game, and if your minimap is open, they'll show on the minimap too. Player proximity shows the range at which enemies can detect you when spawning and despawning. We have a visual for level points, which enemies use to spawn on and pathfind to, and we have a visual for nav mesh surface, which is basically just what enemies use as the floor. On the right side, you'll find insight panels for enemies, extraction points, and valuables. These will basically just give you extra information on variables happening on the back end. Just below that, you'll find visualizations for enemies. There are visualizations for pathfinding, proximity awareness, line of sight, noise detection, and vitality. These visuals can be turned on for each individual enemy, or you can turn them on for every enemy by pressing the visualizer icon. Pathfinding will show you a visual of the enemy's path. Proximity awareness will show you a visual of the enemy's proximity awareness bubble. Probably the coolest visual in Imperium is the line of sight visualizer, which will show you the enemy's field of view cone. This visual will also automatically update when you crouch or crawl. You have noise detection, which will show a line to the last sound the enemy heard, and you have vitality, which will show you a health bar and a vision tab. If you don't already know, in order for an enemy to spot you, you must be in their vision for a certain amount of time. The blue bar shows how much time you've been in the enemy vision, and once that maxes out, that means the enemy has detected you. You also have some basic settings in the bottom left, like smooth animations and scaling. I would always keep smooth animations on unless the visuals are causing you to lag. Auto scale will simply scale the insight panels with the enemy, which you can turn off and adjust if you'd like. And if you kill an enemy, their insight panel will still be there unless you turn on high despawn. These visualizations pair up very nicely with free cam. Free cam can be entered by pressing the F key and you can move around using WASD. Usually when I'm in free cam, I'll turn on cinematic mode just because I think it looks better. The first thing you'll notice is the layers tab, which you can scroll through with the up and down arrow keys, and you can turn on or off certain layers with the enter key. Unless you're looking for specific layers to play with, I would just leave the layers tab alone. FreeCam has its own list of hotkeys, which I'll list on screen. The mouse scroll wheel will control the FreeCam's flight speed. The left and right arrow key will control the FreeCam's field of view. R will return the camera to wherever your player is. G will open the teleportation indicator. L will toggle the layers panel, and V will freeze the free cam, allowing you to move your player. You can also use the console while in free cam, meaning you can spawn enemies and items, which will prompt you with the teleportation indicator, allowing you to choose where it spawns. Next to visualizations, we have the teleportation panel. This panel can also be directly accessed by pressing F3. Here, you can teleport to the truck, to the location of free cam, to specific coordinates, and to extraction points. The interactive button simply opens a teleportation indicator, which, again, can be opened using the G key. You also have the option to create waypoints. You can add a waypoint, which will add a beacon and an overlay. You can teleport to this waypoint by hovering over the overlay and pressing the middle mouse button, or you can teleport to it using the panel. Of course, you have the option to turn it on or off, 
delete it, or toggle the beacon or overlay. Remember, you can also use the teleport feature through the console. The level generation tab is one of the most useful tabs as you can reload or advance levels instantly. Here, you can type the level size, which is basically a level multiplier. If I punch in, let's say five and reload the level, you can see the level is much bigger than usual. You can type the level number, you can choose the map, and you can select the wave value will spawn. Let's select all, then reload the level. As you can see, it takes us to level 85 on Swift Room Academy, and every single place that a valuable can spawn will spawn. You can even use these features in the console. You can reload the level, advance the level, or you can type a map and the level you want to go to. With level generation, you can also select specific tiles. Under the module override, you'll find a full list of every single tile in the game. Let's go to Swift Room Academy and let's generate the wizard lobby tile. Under module override type, you can have these tiles generate normally in a passage, as a dead end, or as an extraction point, which for my testing is the same as dead end. We'll select passage, and up by module amount, we can type in the amount of the tiles we want generated. I'll type five, and now let's reload. As you can see, we have five tiles all spawn in a straight line, and you'll notice they are all the wizard lobby tile. One of the coolest parts about selecting the tile is that in here, you can actually find custom tiles that the game devs use to debug repo. For example, if we go to the start room recording, you can see this is a custom tile you would not be able to find in game. You can also scroll to the debug tiles where you can find specific debug tiles for Axel, Monica, Walter, and a couple other semi-work devs. This is where you can find some pretty interesting rooms. In the game control tab, you can disable enemies which will not spawn any enemies starting on the next level. You can also disable game over, which will prevent the game from advancing when you die. This is super useful when testing with enemies because if you die, the next level won't advance, so you can just open up the object explorer, revive yourself, and continue testing. You can enable spawn or despawn close, which just makes enemies ignore how close or far from you they need to be to spawn or despawn. You can disable enemy vision, and you can enable short action, which to keep it simple, this just causes all enemies to always pathfind away from you. You can adjust enemy spawn and despawn timers, which are located on their insight panels. Under enemy grabbing, you have infinite strength and infinite duration. If you don't already know, whenever you pick up an enemy, they will wiggle out after about two seconds and checking infinite duration will allow you to hold them for as long as you'd like. Infinite strength will allow you to pick up any enemy as if you had infinite strength. Just remember that this is only for enemies. This is not the same as having strength upgrades. On the right side, you have your group currency, which immediately gets updated, and you can buy all items, which gets updated when you reload or advance levels. In the rendering tab, you have some basic rendering options, which I will not be covering. Next is the event log, which shows you some of the occurring events throughout the game. This includes information like enemies spawning, despawning, level reloading, and a handful of other things. One of the newest features in Imperium is the portal. For most of us, including myself, this tab will go unused, but if you're a modder, this tab will allow you to implement your own own UIs to Imperium, which will show up in this tab. I won't be going over how to use this, as modders should be able to figure out how to use it on their own. The final tab we have is the Imperium Preferences tab. Here, you can adjust your general settings, notification settings, quick load settings, and hosting settings. Under quick load, if you check auto launch, you'll be automatically launched into a single player game whenever you start repo. If you check multiplayer, this will automatically launch you into a multiplayer waiting lobby. You also have the option to allow Imperium on clients, which updates right away, so if you have someone else in your lobby trolling with Imperium, you can uncheck this box to take their privileges away. At the bottom, we have a variety of different appearance options, one of them being the OG Imperium Orange from Lethal Company. And at the bottom, we have Factory Reset and Reset UI. If you guys want to use Imperium, you can find it on Thunderstorm. If you want to read more about it, I'll have the wiki linked in the description. And if you guys want to show Geo some love, I'm sure he's going to be reading all the comments on this video, so you can do so down below. Don't forget to like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.